again facing questions about that deadly 2012 attack on the consulate in Benghazi. As we speak, another House hearing on Benghazi with Daryl Ice's Oversight Committee happening in Washington. And the email has provided a controversial lead up to this, sent to former Ambassador Susan Rice ahead of appearing on Sunday talk shows. White House aide Ben Rhodes outlined a goal to quote, underscore that these protests are rooted in an internet video and not a broader failure of policy. Now, Republicans consider this a smoking gun. The White House is firing back, insisting that email was about a broader Mideast policy, not just about Benghazi. This was not, it was explicitly not about Benghazi. It was about uh, the overall situation in uh, the region, the Muslim world, where you saw protests uh, at, uh, outside of embassy facilities across the region, including in uh, Cairo, Sana, Khartoum, and Tunis. Let's get right to our company. Politico chief investigative reporter and author of the upcoming book, Big Money, Ken Vogel, and Republican pollster and former executive director of Texas Republicans under then-Governor George W. Bush, Chris Wilson. Good morning, guys. Hey, Chris. So, Ken, you know what the White House argument is? It wasn't applicable to this specifically, to Benghazi. There were tons of documents released on that. Uh, of course, on the other side, it took a Freedom of Information Act request to get this released. What's the bottom line here? Uh, I think the White House is being too cute here. Uh, if it's not explicitly about Benghazi, as Jay Carney put it, then what is it about the context certainly suggests that it is all about Benghazi. And frankly, the White House is not being forthcoming enough uh, with, the, with the information, the documents that it's releasing for us to be able to reach any other conclusion. So they could put to rest uh, this claim if, in fact, they have the, uh, the fodder to do so by releasing more information. Or they could acknowledge that this was about Benghazi. I don't expect them to release more information, however, because Republicans are using this effectively as a political cudgel to beat Democrats with, and that's what it is, and it's really focused on 2016, frankly, because it's something that I think Hillary Clinton will have to answer for, uh, regardless of how the White House handles this now. Well, to your point, John Boehner and Eric Cantor released statements. Uh, now Virginia Congressman Frank Wolf sent a letter to Speaker Boehner calling for a select committee to conduct an investigation. Chris, is this an issue, though, where any minds are going to be changed or votes are going to be won? Is there a danger for Republicans in overreach here or, if nothing else, in taking the conversation in a place that really isn't going to help them at all? Well, I, I, I don't know that there's danger for overreaching. I mean, this is something, these emails are concerning. And I think the danger is really, uh, and the anger is on behalf of the Democrats who've been defending the administration here. I think that's really where you've got reporters that are outraged. I mean, the, the parts of that press conference as that went on really got, a, it was a heated exchange between Carney and a former colleague. And, and I think that's sort of back and forth and the anger on behalf of uh, a lot of Democrat members of Congress that felt like they were taking the administration at their word, that they believed them, that this was not a coordinated cover-up and trying to make it about something that it wasn't and now these emails prove that that wasn't the case that they were sort of that, that a lot of Democrats and even some reporters have been sticking their neck out um, to defend the administration and now they find out that uh, the administration let them do that knowing that it was just flat out wrong and that they were that the administration was lying to them and that's got to be disturbing I would think on behalf of the Democrats and, and and you talked about the effectiveness Ken and and there's effectiveness in terms of message but also in terms of money uh, do Republicans who now have an opportunity to bring this up again are they able to translate this to donations from conservatives that obviously could be important in the midterms and more broadly to 2016 I think so Chris and that's really one of the main purposes, I think, of Republicans is to rally their base because, as you suggested, they're not going to convince a whole lot of persuadable uh, voters that Benghazi either is a major voting issue or it's something uh, that will cause them to change their mind on party affiliation. It's more about rallying their own base, raising money, and, again, looking towards 2016 when they have a potentially formidable Democratic uh, presidential candidate in Hillary Clinton for whom this is a legitimate issue that she will have to address and so setting aside the politics there also is an underlying real issue that is potentially a real problem for Hillary. Yeah and speaking of the Clintons the former president Bill Clinton was uh, defending his economic policies and um, I guess what you'd call a robust speech to students at Georgetown yesterday. I want to play just a little clip of that. In all the so-called prosperity of the 1980s only 77,000 of our fellow Americans moved from poverty into the middle class. In the 90s, 100 times as many, 7.7 .7 million people, did. That was policy. 
Chris, is this part of the concern that Republicans have about Hillary Clinton? Is it the, the whole legacy question of, of Bill Clinton and for what a lot of people remember is a much better economy than we've seen? Well, I don't think so at all. In fact, quite the contrary. I think if you compare the time when Clinton was president to the time when Hillary was in the administration under Obama, I mean, it's very difficult to make a level of comparison there. And to be honest, I don't think that <clears throat> Bill Clinton emphasizing the success his administration had economically does his wife any favors unless he's going to come forward and make some sort of cl claim that she was directly involved in that. And that would be a lot of revisionist history since at the time they were claiming the opposite. And, and so I don't think that that really does in any way play into it. That's part of this. This is the Bill Clinton sort of re build my legacy tour and that's it's smart on his part we've seen the same thing take place from Jimmy Carter and he spent the last 20 30 years trying to do that and now Clinton's doing the same thing and it's not surprising it's a what former presidents do Ken but I have to ask you really quickly uh, since you write so much about money uh, what about this argument that he's making and how much of it could have an impact on Hillary I think it could have a huge impact on Hillary. Uh, this was sort of part of the trap that the Clintons had uh, during the Obama administration, even as they seemed to be positioning Hillary for a potential run. They had to speak to the Obama. They had to be respectful of the Obama administration. They had to uh, tout her time in the Obama administration. Now we see what I think was a central part of her 2008 campaign, that times were better during the Clinton administration, coming back to the fore. And I think we, we're going to see a whole lot more of that as Hillary continues to sort of test the waters of a presidential campaign. Ken Vogel, Chris Wilson, great conversation, guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, Chris. And if you read only one thing this morning, a New Hampshire newspaper is getting some backlash after a cover story on successful local women.